In this episode, I'll share another favorite exercise that you can do right away. You'll learn how and why asking yourself three questions while you're playing with your horse can keep you focused, get results, and keep you calm. So here we go, episode 108, three questions. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony. Because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. So the other day I posted a a photo on my Dressage Naturally Facebook page from a recent ride on my big, beautiful gray horse, Natia. And it's a photo of me riding her bridleless, and she was just in the most luscious posture, collected trot, and uh, looking quite like a magical unicorn. It was just one of those beautiful moments when you ride, and I happened to have somebody there with a camera, and he got the shot. So I happily uh, posted it, and... uh, What's cool about the photo, too, and what I posted about it is it really was sort of a a picture of me walking my talk, right? So I talk a lot on this podcast and everywhere and everything I do, how um, posture is a result of trust and balance and self-carriage and alignment and understanding and energy and calmness, you know, all wrapped up into this dynamic. And all of those things have so little to do with reins or bits. And so, yeah, bits and reins are part of tool. They're tools of refinement and they can be great tools. Um, But even when riding with them, it's important to remember that they ought to be just a small refinement of what's already happening in the body. And on the post, I kind of commented, you know, here in the United States, it's referred to as, you know, getting your horse on the bit. (laughs) You know, that's what how it's described to be in the posture of roundness. It's like, is my horse on the bit? And so in this beautiful picture of this round collected, you know, gorgeous posture on a horse who's brideless, I pose the question, why is it called on the bit? <laughs> if, if it can be done without even anything on the head. Anyway, so you can find this picture on my Dressage Naturally Facebook page. Uh, I posted it on August 30th. 2022 for anybody listening to this way in the future. (laughs) Uh, Or if you get my Wednesday emails, there was a picture of it in this last one and it's on Instagram. Anyway, (laughs) uh, the reason I brought that up, well, okay, it's a little bit to brag and have you go look at the pretty picture of my horse. Uh, But, you know, I got so many really lovely comments and so, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people shared that photograph, which just warms my little heart. I'm so happy to share my beautiful horse with more people. Um, But I got a lot of comments, I guess, because it was shared so, so much wider. Uh, I got a lot of people saying, Oh, my God, where have you been my whole life? (laughs) Or, Oh, my gosh, I just found out about you. How do I learn this? Uh, Which also makes me happy because I love meeting new people. Um, Well, to answer the question, where have I been? Well, I've been here (laughs) for the past almost 20 years at this point. I've been teaching dressage naturally. I've been teaching and training for even longer than that. But for the past 20 years, teaching live clinics and um, through my book, uh, my dressage naturally book, for the past 12 years, I've been teaching virtually in the video classroom. And for the past about nine years, uh, I've been teaching through virtual courses like my Finding the Sweet Spot, uh, a healthy biomechanics course, which pro tip is going to be open for registration in uh, just a couple of weeks. Anyway, so if there's anyone here who's listening and wondering, how do I learn more of these nitty gritty details, the finer points, the deeper philosophy of doing dressage in harmony, the way we talk about here on this podcast, I just want to remind everybody, like, 
there's lots of ways to learn more uh, for me. I've been here, I've been doing this for a long time. So it always just tickles me when I find new people. Um, I feel like my community is so large, but you know, one picture like that gets shared and it's so fun to, to meet so many people that I haven't met yet. And I know there's a lot of you listening, uh, that have only been listening to this podcast and I haven't gotten a chance to interact with you in any other way. And, uh, that's the other fun part about the programs and, you know, in the video classroom, you can leave comments and questions on the video page and I answer them. And in my courses, we have weekly live Q and A calls and we get to talk, <laughs> you know, we get to talk and talk about your horse and any challenges that you're having. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure that you guys all knew the resources that are available to you. Um, so, uh, let's see the last episode I did of this podcast, um, was about the grid exercise. And apparently that was also super popular. I'm having a good week. <laughs> uh, I've been hearing that people have been out there trying it and already getting some pretty cool results from it. Uh, so I thought on this podcast, I'd give you another type of exercise that you can do something you can listen and you can go out and do it with your horse. And this exercise is kind of cool because it's customizable. You can make it your own. I mean, the other one is too, but this one, I think even a little more so. All right. So in a moment, I'm going to give you the type of exercise that I do, and I'll be able to give you some videos um, that demonstrate it. I have actual videos in the classroom that are exactly on the exercises that I'm talking about. So you can, you can go see them in action um, and look at the ones that, um, that I'm not going to be mentioning on the podcast. Uh, I'll let you know how to easily go find them a little later in this podcast. Uh, maybe you haven't gotten access to the video classroom and that's fine. You can do a free trial anytime you want. Um, I'll also talk about a general guideline that you can use when doing these exercises that I'm going to tell you about. But before we get into all that, first, I'd like you to think about and write down if you can. I mean, if you're driving, just think about it <laughs> and maybe say it out loud, but think about or write down one movement or thing that you'd like to improve with your horse. So what's the first thing that pops in your mind when I say, what's something you're working on right now? So maybe it's something like riding with more consistent bend on circles, or maybe it's um, smoother transitions, or maybe you just want to feel more confident on your horse, or maybe you have a, a green horse, a young horse. So just think about that, because I think as I talk about this exercise, it'll make it even more powerful if you kind of have a idea of how are you, you know, what are you going to go use this exercise for after you're done listening to this? All right. So before I actually tell you the exercise, gosh, I feel like I'm really teasing things tonight. <laughs> but before I tell you about the exercise, I'll give you this guideline. Because it will, it will really help explain how the exercise I'm going to tell you about works. And I call it bouncing attention. Now, there's been a lot of research that shows that the brain can only focus on really one thing at a time. But riding is complex. And there are so many things to keep track of, especially when learning something new. So bouncing attention works with this idea. So instead of trying to think about everything... You're going to check on one thing, and when it's handled, you immediately check on something else. So apparently the brain can hold up to four things in working memory. So in this exercise, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you three things, <laughs> just three things to bounce your attention between. And remembering these three things can actually work a bit like a mantra, which often helps students stay calm and focused. Okay, so what is the exercise? Well, it's called three questions. <laughs> Surprise, that's the name of the episode. <laughs> All right, so in the three questions kind of exercise, you pick something very specific that you want to do or improve or work on. That's why I had you think of that um, a minute ago. And then you need to come up with three questions to ask yourself while you're doing it. 
So the three questions need to be really specific and they need to be something that when you ask yourself if, if you have it or if it's there or if it's happening, you will know, like you'll really know, <laughs> right? So for the same uh, movement or exercise, I might come up with three different questions for different riders. So there's some, you know, there's no magic three questions. I mean, there's some really good choices, but what's important is that you will be sure that if you ask yourself, is this happening? You'll be able to clearly say yes or no without any doubt. All right. So keep that in mind as you want something that's specific and something that when you ask yourself if you have it or not, you will know. It's also, it's also good that the, the questions need to be helpful and positive. Things you can see or feel or measure. So it's not, you know, is this not happening? So instead of saying, is something not happening? Make sure it's positive. Is this, is this other thing happening? So see if as much as possible, you can frame it as a positive thing, something that is happening and not the lack of something. So, um, for, you know, for example, in the video classroom, there's a video called three questions for a quality walk. So let's say that my thing that I want to improve is to get a better quality walk. So maybe it's a working walk. Maybe it's an extended walk. Who knows? This will work for all of them. Is it, you know, a better quality walk? So three questions, these might not be the ideal ones for you, but these are three pretty good ones to start with. Number one, um, do I feel four equal distinct beats, right? That's the definition of a good clean walk, four equal distinct beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, not one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So that's um, measurable. It's measurable. And hopefully you can hear and feel the difference between one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. The second question is, are my hands and the horse's neck moving together? All right, so that's another very specific, and I ought to be able to see it. I can even look down. <laughs> I can see my horse's neck moving. I can see my hands, and I can observe are they moving together or are they moving opposite to each other? Or are they moving very differently? Maybe they're moving together, but one is moving a lot more than the other. So are my hands and the horse's neck moving together? And then the third question is, is my seat relaxed? And that's something, again, I can ask myself that question and if I'm not sure, I can tense it up, relax a little bit more and, and try to learn, <laughs> you know, that feeling that I had from my seat. Is that actually relaxed? Is it as relaxed as it could be? So it's easy to get clenching or tightening or something like that and not notice until somebody asks you, well, you're going to have to be that somebody. So the three questions again for a quality walk. Do I feel four distinct beats, four equal distinct beats? Are my hands and the horse's neck moving together? And is my seat relaxed? So those are three, I think, general questions that can help anybody with their walk. I think anybody can benefit from asking themselves those questions at the walk. And then for you, you and your particular horse, maybe... Maybe your horse has like a bomber walk and the, the beats are always four equal and distinct beats. You don't even need to think about that. And so you might come up with uh, a third question that's unique to you. You might say, are my hands and the horse's neck moving together? Is my seat relaxed? And are my eyes up? Looking ahead, whatever it might be, or is my horse stretching into the contact? So that's how you can use these questions. I'll give you these for ideas, and then you can customize it. As long as those questions follow those rules are about being specific, um, measurable, something that you know when you ask yourself if you have it, 
you're sure of the answer. Yes or no. And now if you were doing these exercises and knew these questions, you would go through the list. And then as soon as you could answer yes to a question, you then switch your focus to the next question. And as soon as you say yes to that one, you go to the next one and you repeat. So, so many times when people try and work hard to keep a quality going, they end up working much harder than needed. So you could imagine thinking, I got to think about the hoof beats. I got to think about moving my hands with my horse's neck. Is my seat relaxed? Oh, I don't know. I have to like do this other stuff. And so it can start to feel really tense. I got to think the beats, the neck, the my butt. Like it's, it's, well, it's scientifically proven to be impossible to focus on all of those things at once. So you can't focus on them, but you can hold them in your working memory, right? So if you just think the beats, hands and neck, relax my butt, (laughs) the beats, hands and neck, relax my butt. So how it would actually sound If I was coaching you, if you were my student and we were playing this game, it would sound like this. Like, hey, do you feel four distinct equal beats? And you go, yes. Are your hands moving with the horse's neck? Yes. Is your seat relaxed? Oh, no, it wasn't. Now it is. Yes. (laughs) And then as soon as you say yes, do you have four equal distinct beats? And in that next moment, maybe your horse got a little... Um, rushing and a little bit pacey, a little bit lateral. So it would sound like this. Do you feel four equal distinct beats? Yes. And so what happened in that blank space? In that blank space, you did something. You made an adjustment. You made an adjustment until you could feel the four equal distinct beats. So as with many exercises that I do, you're not allowed to say no. You're not allowed to lie but I'm happy to wait for the yes. Do something. So if you can't, if you find that you're unable to say yes truthfully, then you need to do something. You need to change something. You need to, oops, remember to listen for the beats. If you can't tell, stay there until you're sure. If the horse is getting irregular, do a little something. What that something is, well, that's that's a different exercise, right? You'll Let's figure that out so that you remember to do that so you get back to equal beats. So hopefully um, when you're in a refined mode with this, it's literally going to feel like, do I feel the beats, the four equal beats? Yes. Hands and neck moving together? Yes. Seat relaxed? Yes. Equal beats? Yes. Hands and, he- and neck moving together? Yes. Relaxed seat? Yes. And you're literally training your brain to pay attention to this. So doing this exercise gives you a chance to make really specific, precise adjustments and then let it go and allow it to happen. It's such an important part of riding is the hard work balanced with the allow. I mean, that's kind of true with anything. You practice, 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 and then just let it happen. Practice getting it into muscle memory. Practice not fixating on it. Keeping your attention not hyper-focused, but focus on it and then let it go. I remember if one of these adjustments, you know, isn't happening, it takes you 20 minutes to get to the yes, then then that's the exercise. (laughs) Then you're not ready to play three questions with that. Then you got to like, oh, we got homework. Let me think of three other questions that I can do. So... Don't worry if it falls apart, right? So if you if you think, yes, I feel the beats. Hands and neck moving together, yes. Seat relaxed, yes. But uh-oh, I'm, I'm saying yes to my seat being relaxed, but I'm already feeling that the rhythm is falling apart. And now I can tell that my arms got rigid and I'm not following. Like that's going to happen and practice not worrying because that next, that question is going to come around again soon enough and you can get it back. This is such a great way to practice adding the relaxation in as you go. It helps you practice being in active neutral. So as you think about one thing, 
and then bounce your attention to the next thing and allow your body to do the previous thing without thinking and without working so hard rather than holding things together. So I did a podcast episode on active neutral. So you might want to go listen to that if that concept sounds in intriguing to you. And so it's, it's not, it's also not that you actively stop doing the thing after you say yes. You don't say, okay, now I'm going to stop moving my hands with my horse's neck while I relax my seat. You just simply don't think about it at all. You put your focus there, you check in and then let it go. Just allow it to go on automatic pilot for a few seconds. All right. I'm just checking. Oh, yep. We got it. Trust it. Because maybe it'll just keep going and you'll be have like 20 million more yeses before it falls apart again. But if you, if you next time you come around, oops, it fell apart again. You just got to keep the dialogue going. And notice when you're doing this, if you're like, I'm in the groove, right? Four beats, yes. Hands and neck, yes. Relax, but, but yes. You know, and then you go four beats. And then like a half hour goes by and you forgot you were doing this exercise, <laughs> right? So that's where it becomes like a mantra, it comes like a rhythm, and it's going to help train your focus to keep track of things. So again, in the in the beginning, there might be a little break between when you ask the question and when you can say yes. That's okay. That's just practice. And, and you're going to start to hear and feel how it begins to take less time and less time, you know, and you, those yeses will just keep flowing. Or, like I said, you're going to realize a missing piece that you need to go practice by itself in order to do this game. All right, so you might be thinking right about now, how do you come up with the questions? Well, for some, go look in the video classroom and I give them to you. So I, I have one, I have videos in there for like three questions for transitions, um, three questions for refining circles, three questions for increasing engagement, three questions for high energy horses, three questions for low energy horses. So there's a bunch in there. So I would go there and find out what those questions are and watch how I use them. But you can also come up with your own questions. Um, now you're already thinking about a few different things when you ride, so might as well define them, right? So when you're riding, you probably already have these questions in your mind. Um, maybe they're not framed as questions, but you're probably thinking things like, keep my shoulders back, look ahead, remember to bend, ah, don't drop that outside rain. All right, so I'm sure you've got a, st <laughs> a stream of consciousness going, especially on the things that you're working on the most or the harder things. Um, so let's define them and let's write them down as questions instead. I think you're going to, I think you're going to really feel the difference between saying to yourself, keep your head up and asking yourself, is your, is, are your eyes up? Are you looking ahead? Right? So it's not, don't look down. Remember we frame it as a positive, make it positive and helpful so it's not, are you looking down again? <laughs> Put it as, you know, eyes up or look at the tree. Are you looking at the top of the trees? You know, whatever you can make your own question, just make it helpful make it positive, make it specific and make it measurable. So think of the thing that you wrote down earlier, or you chose in your head when I said, think about something that you want to improve. Think about something you're working on. So for that thing, what are three checkpoints? What are three things that you will be paying attention to and that will help you be more successful? So think of those three things, say them out loud if you can't write them down or write them down. You can hit pause if you need to think about it a minute before we, you know, continuing on this episode. But just think of the three things and then you can take a minute to form a concise, easily remembered, like don't make the question a paragraph, <laughs> make it, make it a short sentence. And then you can, once you know it, you can do the shorthand, right? So, um, are my, my hands and the horse's neck moving in unison can be shortcutted to 
hands and neck, <laughs> you know, once you remember what the question is. But find the three things. What are the three things for the thing that you are working on with your horse? And then form them into questions. So if this feels a little tricky to you, if you're thinking, well, I don't, I don't know what questions, <laughs> I don't know what questions to ask, or are these the right questions? You know, if you're thinking things like that, um, you know, just try three questions. I don't know if they're right or not. There's infinite number of questions. It would probably be hard to get it too wrong, <laughs> but um, come up with something. But also in the video classroom, there is a video I made where I um, you can watch me coach a student to come up with her own question. So I actually coach her through the process of what I just asked you to do. So I highly recommend watching that video. It's You can find it in um, December 2016, Staying Relaxed on a Green Horse. So when you're in the video classroom, there's several ways to find videos. I do have a chronological list of them, so you can literally search by the month and the year. So you just click on videos, you'll see the year, and then you can search by month. So December 2016, Staying Relaxed on a Green Horse. You can also type in the search box, Relaxation, or Young Horse. <laughs> and I'm sure that this one will pop up in the list of videos. Um, so, And if you ever have trouble finding a video, you just email us or go on our Facebook group and go, hey, I'm looking for a video on staying relaxed on a young horse. Anybody know one? And we'll answer you. Anyway, but write down 2016, December, staying relaxed on a green horse. And so she's, you know, capable rider, nice horse, but he's young and green. And this was, um, she was at a clinic at my house and it was, I think, their first time doing a clinic off the property, you know, away from home. So she was a little nervous. And so I helped her. I did the three questions exercise. And I helped, I helped her pick the questions she needed. So in this case, it was literally, you know, what do you need in order to feel safe? Right? Because the horse was actually being, you know, being pretty nice. Like nothing dramatic was happening, but you know, the feeling of like, uh Oh, something might happen. And so I just, I just basically did what I did, what I'm doing with you guys. What's, what's the thing you're working on and what are three things that you could measure that will give you confidence if they are, if they are working. Right. So she, she was worried. I was like, well, exactly. What are you worried about? She's like, well, I'm afraid he might not stop. If he get if he scoots or something, I'm afraid he's not going to stop. I'm like okay, so that might be one of the questions. Can I stop? <laughs> right. So I think I think that was one of them. Um, the other one, you know, it's like what else? What else do you need in order to feel safe? And I I'm making this up because I haven't watched it in a while. But if it's not exactly this, these are good ones, right? There's no right or wrong questions go watch the video. You can find out, but like, well, I need to know I can turn him. Okay. So am I able to turn? And then another one, um, could be, you know, are you breathing? Right? So are you breathing? So those would be three perfectly good questions for staying relaxed on a green horse. And so as she rode, she could ask herself, do I feel like I could stop? And if the answer was no, I had her actually ask her horse to stop because then we need to find out if she's like, I don't know. I don't know if I could stop. Then we stop. So then she could answer the, she could find out, Oh, that feeling I was feeling. Yeah. That was a feeling of, I can't stop. So now she knows, which is good information. And it tells us we need to practice stopping. And by practicing stopping, then we gain confidence. And now she can ride around going, ah, this feeling, this is a feeling of, I know I could stop if I asked. So do you feel like you could stop? Yes. Do you feel like you could turn? I don't know. <laughs> Let's check it out. Right. And so we went through that whole process and then are you breathing? So she would take a breath and relax. And then you'll see, you'll see in the video how it worked. Um, so once you, once you watch that video, I think it'll really solidify the logic that I just used um, 
to arrive at the questions. And then you're going to be able to do that same thing for yourself, no matter what your situation is or what the thing is that you're working on. You can use this for very, very refined things. You know, come up three questions for your half pass, three questions for your tempi changes. It might be hard to count tempi changes <laughs> and ask you the questions, but you could sure use this coming into the line. So you could come around on the, you're on the short, you know, you're planning a diagonal of tempi changes. And on the short side, you have time to ask yourself these three questions. And by the time you finish the short side, get on the diagonal. If you have not said yes, 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 yes to those questions, you might not be ready. You might, you might decide maybe I should circle around and not try the tempies until I can come into it saying yes, yes, yes to the three questions. Um, if you can't figure out questions and you have an instructor, ask them hey, what are three things I need to be focusing on when I do shoulder in, right? <laughs> so don't be afraid to ask for help. Ask a buddy, hey, what are three things that you focus on when you're doing those amazing circles? All right, so to find the video classroom, you can always find it through my website, but to get to it directly, you go to DNC, as in dressage, naturally classroom. So DNC dot dressage naturally dot net and once you're logged in um, look for the list of video labels so down on the side on the right margin if you're on your desktop on mobile just scroll and you'll get to a list of video labels and you'll see one of the labels says three questions I think it's the first one super easy you can also type that into the search box easy peasy anyway let me know if this helps um, one great way to let me know is to come over to the Dressage Naturally Land Facebook group. You just have to ask to join and I'll let you in. Um, but that's a great place where you can, you know, post in there. Let me know how it went um, playing with this exercise. Or if you're in the video classroom, you can use our Facebook group there. All right, that's it. Bye. Bye.